The winter of 2015 has been a pretty rough one for the New England area. After a very quiet November, December, and most of January, uh, we were hit with a pretty big blizzard at the end of January, and it seems like every week we're getting another storm that's bringing us a foot or two feet of snow. And all of this snow and cold, and I suppose also along with the fact that my daughters are constantly singing songs from the movie Frozen, have uh, sort of got me thinking. And what I was thinking about has to do with MREs. I'm sure that anybody who's bought genuine MREs by the case has seen the warnings on them. In addition to the familiar U.S. government property, commercial free sale is unlawful. It's also another thing I've always thought was sort of interesting. It's on the side of the case, where it says, do not rough handle when frozen, zero degrees Fahrenheit or below. That's something I never really thought about doing, and I'm guessing that the warning applies mostly to the case as opposed to individual MREs. And I kind of want to do something sort of fun, kind of along the lines of the MRE drop test I did a while back. And basically, I wanted to see just what would happen if we were to freeze an MRE and then rough handle it. I have a uh, menu number 11 vegetable lasagna vegetarian meal. And, uh, and we're just going to deposit this in the snow. We're expecting another storm with blizzard-like conditions, and I figure I'll leave this out here for that. Of course, uh, it is the middle of February, so the daytime temperatures certainly can get above zero degrees. So in the long run, I'm going to actually put this in our freezer, but I figure just for the heck of it, we'll actually let it freeze outside for a couple days first. Once it's nice and solidly frozen, we're going to rough handle it a little bit and see what happens. And the storm has started. As you can see, the storm was pretty effective. I'm not even seeing the uh, MRE at the moment. Yeah, I think it's frozen now. But as cold as it is out there, I don't think it's uh, at zero or below. So, despite uh, I think the pretty effectiveness of the uh, natural freezing process, I think we're going to put this into the freezer. Just to make sure it's solidly frozen. I figure with the variations of temperatures outside where it can uh, get up into the teens or 20s, I'm going to have this as close to frozen as possible. Unfortunately we don't have a sub-zero freezer, but I think this will work. I plan on giving that a couple days to be very solidly frozen. All right, the plan was to leave this in here for about a week. But one thing led to another and ended up being 10 days. You're better longer than shorter. Feels pretty solid right now. So those 10 days in the deep freeze gave me a chance to do a little bit of research and figure out exactly why it is that you're not supposed to rough handle an MRE while it's frozen. According to the suggestion on the case, you're not supposed to rough handle it while frozen. It doesn't say anything about not freezing it. So it appears to be not such a bad thing if you freeze an MRE. Once it's frozen though, you just have to be on the careful side. And my original thought turns out to be apparently what the whole issue is. It has to do with the retort pouches. These pouches that the entrees, the side dishes, and a few other uh, things go into are they are kind of a miracle of science, a miracle of research and development, and um, uh, it's one of the best things about MREs, I think, and a big part of the reason why they're supposed to last three to five years, and obviously under the right conditions, they can last a heck of a lot longer. 
next one right here is um, an entree southwest beef and black beans and sauce and this one here is mixed fruit but uh, they're the same same thing and the retort pouch is made up of a number of layers laminated together and it's layers of different materials there's metal and plastic I believe the metal is tin foil and there's a couple different kinds of plastic I'm not really sure about all the science but by laminating all those together you get basically you get a flexible can this uh, pouch here will allow the food to last probably pretty close to as long as it would if it was in a metal can now of course an MRE shelf life is dependent on how it's stored it should be in a cool dark place uh, not being disturbed the ultimate conditions would be the cooler the better if you had a case of MREs and stored it in a dark room at 70 degrees it's going to last you probably three years it may be a lot longer but to be on the safe side say about three years but if you take that 70 degrees and load it down to around 40 45 and everything else stay the same you'd increase the shelf life by a couple of years at least so of course the thought is well why don't we lower it even more and freeze it and there is some point to that the food being frozen isn't as susceptible to um, deteriorate and rot the problem isn't so much the food it's the packaging. As I said, these retort pouches are made up of a number of different layers. And when they freeze, they're going to freeze at different rates. So the tinfoil, the metal layer, will probably won't expand or contract very much, but the plastic layers, especially being different kind of plastics, will expand and contract at different rates. So the simple act of freezing this and then thawing it out and it gets compounded if you do it numerous times, freezing and thawing cycles, is that the layers are going to probably start to separate. And the seal on this, it may look fine, but the seal will probably fail. And it's not too bad in the short term. If you had a brand new MRE, froze it and rough handle it and, and really damaged the packaging, but didn't uh, compromise it to the point where it would spill out, if you ate that in a month, it would be fine. But if you had that damage that you probably can't even see, especially if it's inside of a sealed MRE, the uh, shelf life is going to go way down. It, you might be surprised when you pull it out in a year and find out that it's spoiled even though it's only a year or two old. And I think that's about enough explanation as to why you're not supposed to rough handle it. So now the thing we have to do is take this nice very cold MRE and figure out how we're going to rough handle this for our demonstration. Uh, I think one thing it's... I was thinking I would uh, bend it around, but it's so frozen that it's not really doing that a lot. So I think we'll uh, try and get a semi-real-world situation here. Alright, so let's say it's the middle of winter, and you've been issued a frozen MRE. You don't realize it's frozen, or you've been out so long it became frozen. And you're out on a road march, or some sort of a long-distance hike. And you're walking along, and you pull out your MRE thinking, hey, maybe I'll uh, have some of this stuff and you know, make a little lunch out of it while we're walking. And it, whoops, oh, and drop it. Oh man, oh no. Oh, I dropped my MRE, oh God. And let's say you didn't notice that you dropped it, even if it was kind of forceful. You're in a long column and the guys behind you didn't notice either. And they tend to start walking on top of your MRE and maybe somebody kicks it a little bit and you know, it's, Some kind of rough handling there, isn't it? Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Oh, that poor thing. Oh, ah! And maybe somebody even like you know, does a little, little drop kick. Maybe, maybe you're playing a game of football and you don't have a football and you need something to punt. So you just kind of. <clears throat> Nice kick there. That's, uh, I think I would count as some rough handling. Now I'd have to say the one good thing about that experience we just put this poor thing through is that it was frozen. So even though we may have some issues with lamination problems, uh, I don't think anything's going to burst like it did on the, the drop test a while back. 
In fact, just having all the stuff packed kind of close together, it sort of keeps it pretty sturdy. So um, I'm not expecting there to be any issues with any visual issues. And our next step is going to be to open this up and take a quick visual inspection. And then the final step is I'm going to let this thaw out completely, give it another visual inspection, and then go ahead and eat it and then make sure everything's fine. All right, so despite all that punishment, this bag appears to have survived, which is a good sign. There's definitely some scuff marks on here, but it hasn't torn. I, I actually thought I heard a pop when I was stomping on it. And I thought maybe it may have uh, punctured or there may have been a hole in here, but I don't see anything. So let's open this up. I don't have the inner bag in here. Oh, unfortunately, if we have any kind of cookies, they're going to probably suffer from that. But this is the wheat snack bread. An accessory pack. Oh, uh... Oh, so now there's Tabasco sauce in there. That has nothing to do with the frozen aspect, of course. It's just the fact that I can uh, handle a little bit more than maybe I needed to. Now here we can see some of the, some how it's frozen. If you had any doubt about that. It's kind of weird that it's a. Uh, hmm. Hopefully I didn't puncture anything else. This. Peanut butter is rock hard. French vanilla cappuccino instant powder. And a spiced pound cake. Well, that's good. That one probably won't get as smashed up as like a chocolate chip cookie would have. Here's a vegetable lasagna, and the side is apple pieces and spice sauce. So, pretty similar to the example I had of the Southwest beef and black beans and the um, mixed fruit. Being in the cardboard box and being completely frozen. This really didn't suffer any damage. Like I said, I think, I think that freezing it to some extent probably will actually protect it from having problems. If the lamination can go through one freeze and you don't go through uh, a number of cycles of freezing and thawing, you probably would be in pretty good shape. This thing is uh, nothing solid. And the apple pieces and spice sauce are going to do the same thing. There's actually a little bit of a little bit of give to this. Very cold, but um, not as hard as the, uh, the entree. I was hoping to. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. Bend it up a little bit to kind of try and affect the lamination. Wow, that thing's frozen. You can see it's that's where it's got the separation in the food in there. So if anything's going to damage the lamination, it would probably be this little stuff I was doing outside. Nothing visual, it all looks some strong stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw all this stuff, except for this. I'm just gonna throw it all back into the bag. And we'll give it like a day or so to thaw out. And we'll see how everything is. I said I'm not expecting to find anything in a day. This is probably gonna be fine. But if there was any damage to the lamination layers, and you had this frozen and it ended up like this. I think uh, after a couple of years, you might be surprised how quickly it would go bad. At least that's what I take from the do not rough handle when frozen warning. Everything else I'm sure is gonna be fine. But we'll go through the final step and uh, make sure.
All right, so this poor menu number 11 vegetable lasagna has had about two days or 48 hours to completely thaw out after it's freezing. And I do have to say before we check this out that one last time, I realized this isn't a scientific experiment in any way. If I wasn't gonna do this in a serious way, I would have had to have two MREs, one which would have been frozen, one which would have been set aside as a control. And instead of giving this two days to thaw out and then checking it out, we probably would have waited a year or maybe two years just to see what the effect was of the rough handling. So all that being said, obviously this is more of a fun thing rather than a serious experiment. So let's see how everything survived. No weird smells in there other than there's a slight hint of damp cardboard. And I think that's just because I did put the cardboard boxes back in there. And, you know, when the uh, thawing process was happening, there was a little bit of moisture in there. A little bit of almost like dew. So that might have, might have added to that effect. And I also have to say that uh, you probably saw the damage to the accessory pack. The only things I was able to, to uh, salvage out of that were the moist towelette, the chewing gum, and the raspberry beverage base powder. And actually, the moist towelette didn't actually survive that came open up. Obviously this wasn't a, uh, the effect of the cold, it was just the effect of the extreme rough handling. So you're not going to chalk that up to anything else other than that. Peanut butter appears to be fine. Actually there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a sliminess to it, but uh, it's not leaking anyway. I think that's fine. The uh, French vanilla cappuccino instant powder. Same, it's got that, you know, I, I don't know what that would be from. Either the moist towelette, which isn't moist anymore. You know, maybe it sent out some dampness. The uh, Tabasco sauce was still sealed in the accessory cat kit, so it's not from that. I don't really know. But I wouldn't expect any problems with the freezing for stuff like the wheat snack bread or the um, beverage powders anyway. Although I suppose this would be considered a retort pouch, so we would snap right over time, could have, could have have an issue. And this stuff here is actually... It's wet. What, I don't know if... It doesn't smell like anything, but it's... Ew, it's kind of gross. I don't know if that's just water from the ice when it was frozen or what, but... Uh, oh, I don't know if you can see that on my hands, it's all oily. It looks like something happened. Let's see, the spiced apples, they have that... They have that uh, sliminess on the outside. It may be... Oh, you know what? Yeah, it looks like the... Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it looks like the pouch did puncture with the rough handling. And that would be more a result of the rough handling than the, the freezing, but I suppose once these are frozen and they're solid, they're probably, they're, they're a lot less flexible, so they probably are more prone to uh, having punctures in them when they're being rough handled. So I guess that's what the sliminess is coming from. I'll have to wipe everything down before we open them. The spiced pound cake looks fine. Probably beat up on the inside, but... And then, of course, the star of the day, the vegetable lasagna. You can see it still has the lines in here from when it was frozen, but... That looks to be perfectly fine. It's just too bad that the uh, spiced apples had to pop open a little bit. And that, I, like I said, I don't know if that had anything to do with the freezing or not. It had a lot to do with the rough handling. And like I said, it's possible that being in a frozen state, it might have been more susceptible to tearing open. So I'm going to go ahead and plate this stuff and um, heat up the lasagna. And we're going to try everything out. I'm sure everything will be fine, but since we have it here, I don't want to waste it. I'm not going to throw everything away. I'm going to actually eat this. All right, so on further inspection, after um, trying to wipe these down, I, I did notice that the hot beverage bag, unfortunately, has a tear in it. So we're not going to be able to use that, which isn't too bad because it's, it's very slimy anyway. I think some of the stuff even got inside because of that hole. So that's not going to be any good. Uh, luckily, this one doesn't have coffee in it. And the beverage base powder is meant to be put into a bottle of water. And the French vanilla cappuccino instant powder is in one of these pouches that you can actually mix it up right in. So I really didn't actually need the hot beverage bag for this one anyway. Let me get the 
Got this ration heater going, that's going pretty good. I'm just going to plate everything and then put it on camera, but I just opened the wheat snack bread and discovered that this uh, didn't react well to um, the rough handling. Now, I didn't see anything like this when we did the, the 10 story drop, so even though the packaging is fine, I think this may have had to do with the fact that it was frozen. I wasn't being gentle with this in any way, but I didn't expect it to get crumpled up like this. A little bit of peanut butter on there. Yes, it's still slimy. And obviously, whether the apples would have punctured if they're frozen or not. The fact that the bag is compromised, this obviously would have a very negative effect on the shelf life. If we came back to this in a year, even though it's a small little hole, it's still a compromise to the uh, retort pouch. So having it two days later shouldn't be any problem. It smells good, but uh, it would have been a pretty nasty surprise in a year or two, I think. See how the pound cake survived after what we saw with the wheat snack bread. And the fact that this is on the moist side, I think, probably helped it. Wow, the Oxygen absorber was really smashed in there. Raspberry beverage based powder is supposed to go into a 20 ounce bottle of water. Now you have a 16.9 ounce bottle. So it'll be a little, a little extra flavorful, but that's okay. It's got a very sweet smell to it. And this isn't the carbohydrate electrolyte powder, this is just the regular beverage mix. So it's uh it smells more like a like a fruit juice rather than like a, a sports drink or a Gatorade kind of a thing. The French vanilla cappuccino powder takes six ounces of water. It smells really good. All right, now what would be the moment of truth if this had been sitting for a couple of years? Special lasagna in its uh, rough-handled retort pouch. Totally fine, still has the lines in here from where I folded it when it was frozen, but um, you know, any imperfections that may have been caused by the freezing of the different layers of lamination, it's just obviously is not going to show up in two days. I know I've said that a number of times, but this probably would be a much more interesting experiment if we did it over the course.
course of a couple of years rather than a couple of days. But I'll leave that to the uh, Natick Labs. All right, so I guess you can't really say that we've learned a ton from this experiment. I still think it was worth, worth doing, though. As we determined over the course of a longer period of time, the stuff in the retort pouches is probably going to go bad quicker, especially if it has a, a defect in it or if it has a, uh, a hole in it. I don't know how the lamination was on the entree from handling it while it was frozen. Like I said, that would have taken a couple years and I just wasn't really up for waiting that long. The fact that we didn't wait that long means that everything should be fine. It'll be the same as any four-year-old MRE, what you would expect to find. The only other thing was that uh, we discovered that the wheat snack bread really did fall apart. Um, and I think that did have something to do with being frozen. I wouldn't expect... It's not so pretty hard, too. I mean, it's four years old, but it's... Um, it really did do a number on it. It's very brittle now. It just wants to fall apart and get all crumbly. And the peanut butter's fine, though. Like I said, everything seems to be fine. Because we only waited two days. If we had waited longer, we might have seen some more effects. Especially in the apples. Which tastes basically like, um, like a canned apple pie filling. And the vegetable lasagna course is perfectly fine. The foam on top of the cappuccino, it's nice, nice little touch there. And that is very good. Despite not being a coffee drinker, something sweet like that is, is very tasty. And the raspberry beverage. And it's like a, a kid's drink, kid's fruit drink. So, I guess, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't call the experiment a failure, but it wasn't as um, earth-shattering as it could have been. But uh, now I have a meal to eat while I consider what the next experiment should be.